why is it that more black women are likely to die of medical conditions in comparison to white women? And I think a lot of that has to do with implicit bias. This is part two of our series on maternal mortality. The most recent data indicates that the leading cause of death for women after giving birth is because of an overdose. We actually know that about 80% of pregnancy associated deaths actually happen within a year after those women give birth. But for women of color, health experts say they are often dying for different reasons. It's a story that hits close to home for Ariana McGee. She says she almost died on the table after going into labor. This doctor did not listen to me. She was dismissive. She tried to send me home. The mother of four was considered high risk after already having multiple C-sections. We had to really argue her down and thank goodness we did because when my doctor found out, she Im immediately came in rushing back to the operating room. They opened me up and I have a uterine window. What that means is her uterus had a thinning in its lining. And it, it was so thin, it looked like a water balloon about to burst. You could see my daughter's hair. Although statistics from the Indiana State Department of Health show that many women are dying from addiction and overdose, Dr. Alicia Harris says the story is often different for black women. She says often black women are dying from medical complications, issues like hypertension, hemorrhaging, and infections. So why is it that more black women are likely to die of medical conditions in comparison to white women? And I think a lot of that has to do with implicit bias. Dr. Harris says those women are not being heard. There are some um, women of color who, you know, feel that, you know, maybe they're not being heard. Uh, they're not, you know, when they go in and say, I, I don't feel right. I feel like something's wrong. And the doctor says, oh, you're fine. Just go ahead and go home. I mean, do you think that there's an issue there? You know, I, I think that um, studies definitely um, show that there can be underlying biases, whether that is um, bias related, related to race or bias related to someone being obese or bias related to someone who has struggles with substance use disorder that contribute to an individual patient's ability to really be heard, listened to, and um, respected. You have to rely on the information that the patient is communicating to you. Some of that is black women may not feel completely comfortable um, explaining how they're feeling or their provider may misinterpret what they're saying or simply be dismissive of it. There's also other factors like access to health care. I asked State Health Commissioner Dr. Christina Box about it. How much does access to health care, access to insurance, how much does that play a role in these rates? So we definitely see, and, and you know, Medicaid is, is how many women are insured, but we do see a higher incidence of um, maternal mortality in our Medicaid population. About 63% of um, women had uh, Medicaid um, who suffered a maternal death. And then we do see a slightly increased risk for maternal mortality in our counties um, as com that have no inpatient obstetrical services as compared to the number or percentage of women that are delivering from those counties. The health department is watching that disparity very closely, and so is Dr. Harris. I feel like if we could start with health care policy, access, addressing the social determinants of health, which is far beyond what a physician can do, <laughs> That will be a great foundation for change. And then if each one of us does our part as a clinician, I listen more. I think more about the social determinants of health. As a patient, I go into pregnancy in my best health. As for McGee, she started Navigate Maternity after her childbirth experience. When that happened, everything changed. It became real for me. She connected a team of healthcare professionals. Dr. Harris is a part of that team. Together, with the help of others, they're creating a remote patient care center for prenatal and postpartum moms to track the data, particularly when it comes to black moms. Then they'll give that information to healthcare professionals who are caring for them. One of the biggest gaps is that right now we don't have data on our patients between appointment one and appointment two. And what our software does is that it allows through the use of our, our sensors to capture real time biometric data so that physicians and, and, and care teams can use that 
that data and then make a proactive choice for their patient. But McGee says the most important thing is for moms to speak up. You know your body best. If something does not feel right, tell your doctor right away. Call the care team. Don't go to sleep. Don't say, oh, I'm, you know, it's, it's going to be fine. Women, especially mothers, we are, you know, constantly saying, oh, I'm, I'm fine. Oh, I'm, I'm busy. I, there's a thousand things I've got to do. And we usually take care of ourselves last. Don't do that. Listen to your body and tell your healthcare provider ASAP. Wow. So what's the bottom line here, Angelica? What do we need to do to bring these numbers of deaths down. So it's certainly a complicated problem, right? Yeah. And when you think of the term, it takes a village, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking a village of family. We're talking a village of people who are doing like what Ariana is doing mm -hmm. and Dr. Harris is doing to help raise awareness. And um, it, it's not going to be a simple fix is really the bottom line. Yeah. Okay. But like she said, talk to your doctor if you feel something mm -hmm. is off and just be aware of sometimes you're going to have to advocate for yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Very good.